Today we'll be talking about the top defensive tackles the Texans could select in the 2024 NFL Draft. And speaking of the draft, I had a goal here for this channel. I wanted to get to 14,000 subscribers before the start of the NFL Draft. As you see, I got a little bit of ways to go. So if you haven't subscribed yet, which whenever I looked at the analytics for the channel, over 60% of y'all aren't subscribed yet. So let me tell you what you're missing. Daily Texans videos for free. We go live whenever there's huge news around the Houston Texans. And for every single draft pick that the Houston Texans make, I'll break them down in a video here on the channel. So if you want free Texans content and the best Texans fan community on the internet, I've got it right here 100% free. Go down and hit that sub button or go to youtube.com slash Texans TV to join the wave and subscribe to the number one Texans channel on YouTube. Today's show, I will be breaking down 10 defensive tackles I think the Texans could select in the 2024 NFL Draft. Now, these aren't the top 10 tackles in the draft. This is kind of how I did the defensive tackle rankings in this video. I did it with overall skill set, the fit with the Texans, and where the Texans would have to draft them. So if they're a fifth or sixth round prospect, that kind of factored into where I would rank them for the Texans going into this season. And with all that said, let's get right into my list. Coming in at number 10, Jordan Jefferson, uh, Jefferson defensive tackle from LSU. I gave him a round four, six grade going into this year. Jordan Jefferson, I mean, he is a big dude. 6'4", 317 pounds. And if you look at his numbers from last year, really good production. 36 tackles, seven tackles for loss, two and a half sacks. I really like what he brings to the table. If I look at my notes real quick on him, I like the size. One of the strongest players at LSU, multiple players said he was one of the strongest guys in the locker room. He doesn't really have a pass rush, stands upright too much, and he needs some better fundamentals. That's why Jordan Jefferson is at number 10. But for a round four to six guy, I like the fit with the Houston Texans. Now let's go to number nine on my list. McKinley Jackson out of Texas A&M. Here's a guy, 6'2", 325 pounds. He has a really good base, stout guy uh, from Texas A&M. I have a ground, uh, round four to five grade on McKinley Jackson. Had some decent production for the Aggies last year. He has a good center of gravity. He's a stout guy. Pretty good length. Moves well laterally, and he's a two-year captain for Texas A&M. The bad on him, he really does not have good snap anticipation. His pass rush moves are eh, and he can be moved pretty easily by double teams. So McKinley Jackson comes in at number nine for me for the Houston Texans. Now, I want to hear from you folks at home. I just told you two dudes. They're later round guys, round four, five, six guys that the Texans could draft a defensive tackle. But if it was up to you, what round should the Texans target defensive tackle? Now, they don't have a first-round pick, but should they get it with one of their two uh, second-round picks? Maybe in the third, fourth round. Should they wait till the seventh round to draft a defensive tackle? You let me know what you think down in the comment section. Next up, Leonard Taylor the third defensive tackle from the U, the University of Miami. I have a round four grade on Leonard Taylor. 6'3", 305 pounds. Now, I'm going to show you his 2023 stats, but... His 2022 production was much better than this year, and he has really good size, and he can even add a little bit of weight onto his frame. He has uneven production, obviously, looking back to 2022, a lot better than this season. He has raw pass rush skills and a lot of missed tackles from Taylor this season. That's why he's lower down on my list, but he's a high upside guy that I could see the Texans taking maybe in round four, round five of this year's draft. Now, this next one might surprise you. I was a lot higher than him in – uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, but I've done a little bit more research on Braden Fisk, and he lands at number seven on my list right now, and it's mostly because the Texans would more than likely have to take Fisk in round two. He has good size, 6'5", 297 pounds, the guy out of Florida State, but the only thing with him is he's old. He's going to turn 25 his rookie year. He has below average arm length, and the run game needs a little bit of work. He has great interior pass rush, great intensity, and one of the best athletes at the defensive tackle spot. That's what Fisk brings to the table. But at the same time, an older guy who you'll have to take earlier in the draft. That's why he's a little bit lower for me on my list of top 10 defensive tackles, but he still makes the list at number seven. I have six more guys to break down, but I want to give you 
the opportunity to get on, on some great deals. You go to chatsports.com slash Texan sale. Our friends over at Fanatics have some awesome deals set up for you on all these items. They have a lot of Texan sale items, especially because those new jerseys are coming out. So a lot of Texans gear is on sale now. Capitalize on all that stuff, 50, 60, even 70% off on the website. I got it just for you. The link is down in the comment section and description of today's video. Chatsports.com slash Texan sale. Go check out, just peruse. Maybe do a little window shopping on everything that they have. I promise you, you'll find one or two things that you will want to get. Go check it out in the comment section. Next up, a lesser known prospect. I'm going with Christian Boyd out of University of Northern Illinois. Give me a round six, seven grade on Christian Boyd. Now, he's 6'4", 317 pounds. He has a lot of prom. North, Northern Iowa. Okay, I thought, whenever I said Illinois, Producer Jack, that's why he's one of the best in the business. Whenever I said Illinois, I thought I might have been wrong on that. University of Northern Iowa. How could I forget the powerhouse over in Northern Iowa? I have a round six, round seven grade on this kid, and he really did produce a lot this past season. 43 tackles, six and a half tackles for loss, three and a half sacks, 40 pressures on the season. Now, obviously, the bad is, He's going to also turn 25 this season. I have him a little bit higher than uh, Fisk because he's a round six, round seven guy. He also played at a small school, so that's a little, another little knock on him. But he holds his ground on run plays. Explosive off the snap, good physicality, and good strength. He had 38 reps at the bench press, which was a school record for Northern Iowa, the powerhouse over in Northern Iowa. 38 reps. I can't believe that's a school record. But, Boyd, he has it. Great strength, but can he adapt to a higher skill set in the NFL going up against a lot better talent than he faced this past season? That is yet to be seen. Here is my next guy that I have, and maybe another surprise for you, Savon Dre Sweat at number five out of the University of Texas. Now, he's somebody who is going to go in round two, round three. I don't see him getting past round three. Maybe see him getting past round two, but – mostly because of the off-the-field antics for Sweat. Last week, he had a DWI, I mean, only a couple weeks away from the biggest day of his life, and he gets a DWI. That is not, that's a big red flag for a lot of NFL teams. I know some teams probably took him off their board. He needs to also stay in shape. He's a massive dude, over 360 pounds, and he had missed tackles last season, but he's obviously a huge dude, great production at Texas last year, as you see on the screen. In 2023, he had two sacks, nine tackles for loss, 45 tackles, four pass breakups for the Longhorns. He has really good strength and a really good run stuffer up the middle. But now with everything around Sweat, do you even feel comfortable taking him in round two? He has some conditioning concerns. He has some, you know, concerns around his mentality and how serious he takes the game of football. He's known as a class clown type guy, which I'm all cool with. I'm a class clown guy too, but... If you let that affect you off the field, if you let that affect your decision-making off the field, that is a little bit of a red flag for a lot of teams. So I want to know from you at home, would you draft Sweat in round two? If I'm telling you, you have to take him at 42 or 59. He's not going to make it to your next pick. Would you draft him? Give me a yes, give me a no down in the comment section. Now, this next guy has been very popular around Texans Twitter, former teammate of C.J. Stroud, Mike Hall Jr. of Ohio State. And he has a round two round three grade on him. I have a number four just because I think the Texans are seriously looking at Michael Hall. They brought him in for a visit. But the only thing that worries me is his frame. He's 6'2", 280 pounds. He has n does not have a lot of size. And even if you did add weight onto a guy like Michael Hall, I don't even think that'll be enough. He was also flagged for personal fouls in 2023 in multiple games in costly situations for the Buckeyes. He battled some injuries, but the good with him is he is an insane athlete. At his pro day, had the best 40 time of any defensive tackle in this year's draft. He's a young guy, too. One of the youngest in this year's draft at the defensive tackle spot, and he has a high motor. That's why he's number four on my list, but the size is a major concern for me. Now, this guy out of Michigan, Chris Jenkins, is somebody who, the more I watch on him, the more I look up Chris Jenkins' highlights, the more I look up Chris Jenkins' tape, the more I fall in love with this kid. He is an absolute beast for the University of Michigan, who obviously won the national title this past year. So he is 
a championship pedigree coming out of college. 6'3", 305 pounds. I have a round two grade on Chris Jenkins. I think they'll have to take him at either 42 or 59. I don't think he makes it to round three. And you look what he did the past couple years for the Wolverines. 37 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, 20 pressures this season. 54 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, two sacks, and 20 pressures last year for Jenkins. My notes on him, he's a stout body, great against the run, high effort player, a team captain, and he started every single game for the Wolverines over the past two years. The bat on him, he has a little bit too uh, high of pad level on certain plays. He has below average backfield production, as you see, only two and a half, two sacks the past two years, and needs to work on his pass rush moves, but he is really what you're looking for in a defensive tackle in this league. He has a great motor, and I think he would be a really good pick for the Texans in round two. Coming in at number two, maybe a surprise to some people how high I have him, but I really am falling in love with Mason Smith as a prospect. I have a round two, round three grade on him, and it would be an A-plus if the Texans were able to get Mason Smith in round three of this year's NFL draft. Now, the thing that's going to be concerning is you see 2022, no stats. In the season opener, he had a ACL injury, a torn ACL, which made him miss the entire 2022 season. And he was only a one-year starter for the Tigers in the Bayou City. He has great size for an interior player, 6'5", a massive frame. He has really good length as well, and he uses his size and length to his advantage. He has really good quickness for somebody at that size. And somebody I love about Mason Smith is the fact that he doesn't miss tackles very often. He is very sure-handed on the interior of the defensive line. A guy like Mason Smith, I think he can immediately come in and get in a rotation with Danico Autry and Foley Fotokasi in the interior for the Texans, and I think he can make a difference his rookie year. Mason Smith coming in at number two for the Texans at for defensive tackle prospects in this year's draft. Now, before I give you my number one guy I think the Texans should draft this year, Here's some guys who just missed list. Dwayne Carter from Duke. I really like his tape. He round three, round four, maybe five guy. Rook uh, Aroro from Clemson. I really hope I said that right. I, I looked at the pronunciation guide before. I believe it's Rook Aroro from Clemson. A round two, round three prospect. I like what he brings to the table as well. Brandon Dorless from Oregon. Jaden Crumity from Mississippi State. And Gabe Hall from Baylor. Dorless, a round three, round four guy. Crumity, a later round guy, maybe fit five, uh, round five, round six. And then Gabe Hall, I'm really not sure. Anywhere from round three to round five, I could see Hall going. But these guys just missed the list. And then a couple more guys that I don't have on here because I don't think they'll be on the board for the Texans. I think Darius Robinson is a first round grade, which a lot of people have him at edge rusher. Darius Robinson played all over the defensive line for the Mizzou Tigers over the past couple seasons. He played on the interior and on the edge. But I don't think he'll be there for the Texans in round two. And another guy who won't be there for the Texans is Byron Murphy, the second from the University of Texas. I have a round one grade on him as well. I think both those guys will be taken before the Texans pick at pick 42. So before I give you my number one guy, if the Texans can only draft one defensive tackle, who should it be? If you're if Nick Casario, D'Amico Ryan, they come to you and say, hey, we're only going to draft one DT this year. Who should it be? Let me know down in the comment section and let me know why the Texans should draft that player. I know a lot of y'all are high on Sweat. A lot of y'all are high on uh, Mike Hall Jr. Let me know your thoughts on who the Texans should draft this year. My number one, I'm going with Jerzon Johnny Newton from Illinois. He is my number one guy I want the Texans to draft this year. Round two grade on him. Fringe round one guy. He could very well be taken before the Texans pick at 42, but if he does fall, to the Texans at pick 42, which in Mel Kuyper's latest mock draft, he had Newton falling to the Texans. I think it would be an A++++ grade. He is my number one defensive tackle I want the Texans to draft this year. I think I might even like him better than Byron Murphy. He has insane production in the Big Ten for the Fighting Illini. Seven and a half sacks this year, five and a half last year, eight and a half tackles for loss this year. 14 last season. He All he does is wreak havoc in the backfield. He is a great, great player on the interior. The good for him. He's explosive. Great production in the backfield. He had four block kicks in 2023 that led all FBS players. He had relentless hustle. 
my favorite DT prospect for the Texans. And yeah, he didn't miss a single game over the past four years. Not a single game due to injury. If that's not consistency, if that's not a guy showing up every single day trying to get better, I don't know what is. Jerzon Newton, Johnny Newton is what, what he's wanting to go by moving forward. I think he would be a slam dunk. Now, he does have below average body width and length. He missed some tackles, and he's a little bit jumpy at the line of scrimmage. He tries to get a jump on the snap count, which can hurt him at some points in the NFL. But overall, he is my darling. He's my number one guy. I want the Texans to draft that pick 42 if they're going to go defensive tackle. Now, one more time, if you want to take some screenshots, if you want to share this on Twitter or Instagram, just tag me at Jeremy Chugs. But here's my top 10 guys. I want the Texans to draft a defensive tackle. Jordan Jefferson, McKinley Jackson, Leonard Taylor, Braden Fisk, and Christian Boyd did my top five. Tavondre Sweat, Mike Hall Jr., Chris Jenkins, Mason Smith, and Johnny Newton. Let me know, did I miss anybody? Do you like my list? Do you hate my list? Let me know down in the comment section. And if you haven't already, if you made it to the end of the video, you might as well go down and hit that sub button. It's 100% free. My guarantee to you, hit that sub button. If you don't like it in a week, then you can unsubscribe, no skin off your back. But let me prove to you why we are the number one Texans channel on YouTube and why we are the fastest growing Texans on uh, Texans channel on YouTube. Go down and hit that sub button right now if you want daily Texans videos for free.